Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to talk a little bit about um, CTSI's career development programs. Uh, and I just want to um, point out to begin with that our career development activities really break down into three main areas. Uh, the first one is mentoring. The second one is career advancement, that is trying to make sure that uh, people who choose to be researchers at UCSF, UCSF have a clear, clear and successful career path. And then the third one is pilot funding. So um, we are going to talk about all three of those things in this brief segment. Jeanette's going to talk about mentoring. She's the, uh, she's the leader of our mentor development program. I'm going to talk a little bit about career advancement and diversity. Uh, and then this presentation will be followed by a separate presentation uh, by our SOS, or Strategic Opportunity Support Program, which is our pilot funding program. First, I just have to say, everything that I've learned about mentoring, I've learned from Deborah Grady. She can't stand it, but I love it. Anyway, our mentor development program is training the next generation of mentors and building a community of excellence. We have mid-career and early senior faculty, 10 case-based seminars January to May every year, a toolbox of strategies and collective experience that is all on the web now. You can find it on the CTSI website. Uh, and we have two publications, and we're working on a third publication from this. And national leadership, we've been to over 10 different institutions in the last two years uh, describing our program and helping other CTSAs with development of their mentoring programs. And we've trained 60 mentors who now provide expertise, advocacy, and community for a community of excellence. This was our third uh, MDP graduate uh, retreat. We have one every year. And I'm sure you'll recognize many people here from all the different departments and schools. Do I have a pointer? Maybe not. But uh, what I think shows uh, success in a program is that many of these graduates are now leaders in, in our, uh, thank you, are now leaders in our mentor development program, including, let's see who we have up here. Well, Kathy's old like me, so she's been here. But um, <laughs> oh, we're all the same. There, but she's from the School of Nursing, so you all know Kathy Lee. Joe is another co- uh, or assistant director from School of Pharmacy, and we re represent all the schools. Um, but Mandana Kahili, who I don't think is here today, but she's heading up our mentor consultation unit that I'll talk about. Lawrence Huang, he is now one of the assistant directors, and he started it in our first cohort. Um, Mitch Feldman, you all know, who, what I love about this, and I'm going to mention it briefly, is that we've really brought together both what's going on on the school or the campus-wide level, and Mitch, as you know, heads up the faculty mentoring program, and their resources and our resources to have shared resources and really benefit everyone. Um, you might, some of you may know, let's see, yeah, wrong button, might know Stuart back here. Okay, I got to hurry, sorry. I got to push from my, my thing. The Junior Faculty Mentoring Program. This is a great program. It aims to pair every junior faculty member with at least one mentor. And this, Mitch and I have been working on together. We collaborate with the UCSF Faculty Mentoring Program, Mitch Feldman, who would be here, but he's in Japan working on mentoring things with a Fogarty grant. Each department has mentor facilitators, and they're charged with ensuring junior faculty members. And we train, or we are in the process of training all, all facilitators facilitators in the mentor development program. Our new programs, I mentioned mentor consultation service. That goes along with what you heard previously from Mark Pletcher. We use the consultation serv uh, service portal to respond to questions and discuss issues that shining light on an issue Talmadge, that Talmadge mentioned that often helps. And most of our moms are mentors of the month who take the consultations. Uh, are, ooh, I really have to hurry, okay, because Deb has a bunch of, uh, that's the total program. Uh, so I'm really got to be done. Um, we have mentor profiles, so those of you who have done profiles, you know it's a great mechanism by which uh, to have, um, find research colleagues where you can also find mentors, and we have an electronic mentor evaluation we're working on. There we go. I'm going to just spend a very brief uh, amount of time on our uh, activities and career advancement. We really, we really are trying to ensure that, as I said, researchers have a clear career path and they can be successful. We've tried to work on bringing more recognition to clinical and translational researchers by working with the Academic Senate, which 
uh, one of our successes, I think, is now there are three annual lectures, one for clinical, one for translational, and one for basic science uh, researchers to recognize those folks each year. We've also uh, tried to work with the various HR, um, uh, associate deans for HR at each of the schools to train department chairs, division chiefs, and we're trying to think about promotions committees in order to make sure that those people realize the value of, of uh, multidisciplinary and team-based team -based research. Um, and finally, we've been doing, we've been looking at promotions materials to see if those do mention these kinds of uh, research activities. We also provide support for faculty who need to redirect or want to refocus their research by providing funding for mini sabbaticals, which usually springs the faculty member from their teaching or administrative roles for up to um, six months. And this is the last slide. Uh, I'm, we really are trying to improve the diversity of our clinical and translational researchers. This is really a long discussion, which I'd be happy to go into uh, with any of you if, uh, who have ideas about it. But we're trying to focus both on recruiting more underrepresented minorities uh, to our faculty, as well as retaining both our, both our faculty, but also our wonderful students. We have great diversity in our student population. It falls off as they become residents and fellows or graduate students, and then it's pretty inadequate by the time they get to faculty. So we have a number of programs focused on this. Great. Thank you, Career Development. You uh, finished just in time, saving us from, uh, from uh, this thing, to, to pull them off the stage. And I, I never bothered to learn the name, or to try to pronounce it uh, when the, the uh, World Cup was on, and now. I'm not going to try today. Um, so um, I, I keep starting over here. Maybe we'll start on the other end this time. David, you want to start? Well, I'm just going to keep it simple because uh, when I was at Columbia University, I got here about four months ago, uh, there was a mentoring program that was put in place, and everybody that was involved with that was looking at the website from here and t you know trying to reach out. This really is a model program that's recognized all around the country. And this is just a partial description of, uh, I think, what's going on and how it is representing all of the schools. And, and that, I think, is just a real model for programs uh, in the university here. So Thank you, Simon. Hats off to him. Hats off to <laughs> no, no, Simon. I thought, well, no, oh, no, this is Paula here. Yeah. This is Paula. <laughs> Simon never says nice things like that. Oh, that's yeah. true, too. That's true. I'm supposed well, to Well, when he does yeah, say, when Simon says nice things like that, they mean something, yeah. right? <laughs> so that's right. Yeah. <laughs> going to win the prize. All right, Talmadge, you want to go next? Well, well I, actually, my, this is one of those, I shouldn't say what I'm about to say because I'm going to get in that's trouble with kind of questions. But, but as a chair of the department, um, I don't know that um, I'm judged on whether uh, I improve diversity in my department or not. And I, and I think if we want the school to be uh, better at it than we are, then, then that has to be one of the things that, that somehow I get dinged for. And I, and I, don't, and I don't think that that, that happens. <laughs> Here's my boss sitting right here. So. There it is. Yeah. Hey, tell me, I guess you haven't been through your first stewardship review yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why I said I was putting my foot in my mouth because it's coming up. I, it's like. But I, I have to point out that as CTSI, while this is very, very high on our list of important priorities, we obviously by ourselves cannot make this happen. So that's why we have in our renewal period now um, uh, are collaborating with Renee Navarro, who's our new. Um, Vice Dean for Diversity, Chancellor. she is Vice Chancellor, sorry, Vice, Vice Chancellor for Diversity, um, who is the actual leader of the Career Development Program. Uh, and I, I, I do think we've been able to help quite a lot by focusing on clinical translational researchers, whereas Renee's purview is, is everybody at UCSF. Uh, but we, we really need that kind of um, cooperation at the top and the big picture across the university. Great, good. Sam? Uh, Jeanette, I would uh, echo uh, David's comments that uh, great content, but if you want to be invited back next week, work on the timing. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I guess my, my question for, for Deborah is, um, you know, I've heard for a number of years that we have concerns about uh, career advancement for people who are participating in team science or team research, and uh, just your sense of have we made progress? Is it still a significant problem? And uh, 
in the in the groups that you mentioned that you're getting out and trying to educate about the issue, uh, you didn't mention specifically CAP, and I wonder where you think the problem is, if there is still a problem. Um, I, I, this is one of those issues where I don't have hard data, so um, it's a little hard to answer. But our perception is that things are much improved, but not optimal. And we get this impression from a lot of individual stories of uh, people who seem to be very uh, successful in team-based and, and uh, multidisciplinary research, but then have problems either with at their department or division level. Usually not at CAP, I must say. Now, Jeanette has been on CAP for the last four or five years, and I think her perception is the same. That it felt like four or five, but it's only been three. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the perception yeah. is that it, things are pretty good at CAP. Okay. But this uh, idea that the successful investigator is a single PI who is the leader of everything, the first author or the last author, gets all the credit, um, is something that really has to change if we're going to be able to do research in the 21st century, because that's just not going to work anymore, and the contributions of the entire team have to be recognized. So we feel like we've made progress. I don't know, Mike, this was one of your major concerns. Are you feeling like we've made progress? Yeah, I, th I think I'd like to second, third, and fourth this. I think this is a really important issue that's something that needs to be dealt with. I also agree that most of the problems are not at the level of cap, but at the level of uh, below that. And I think one of the things that I think CTSI can do that would be very helpful is to come up with a set of metrics that could be used, quantifiable metrics that could be used to reward the kind of research that you're talking about. It's one thing to say we should reward team research. I think that's great. But the challenge, I think, is to come up with a set of metrics that are comparable to the set of metrics that we've done over the decades for single investigators. Or at least clear. Great, great <laughs> challenge. I, I was just in the Department of Medicine. Um, this has been a, a big issue for our Executive Promotions Committee. And one of the things that we are finding very helpful, just so obvious, and that is for people to tell us you know, I mean, you, you, you sit and you look at an individual's application and you can't figure out what they did and what they didn't do in, in involved in a project. Right. And so by just telling us, um, that, it, that immediately changes the discussion. Well, as a first step, one of the things we've, we've worked with the, the various school HR um, associate deans to do is to have a, in the format for the promotions materials, there is a section where you are supposed to address this. The, the res faculty member is supposed to address it, the promotions committee or the chair, whoever writes the letter, is supposed to address it. And we've actually surveyed the small schools, and they do a very good job at this. Um, it's really the School of Medicine that well, still has major problems. Sorry, Paula. <laughs> yes, <laughs> judging the judges. All right. <laughs>